I already have about a million books that I want to finish this year and I'm just going to add 20 more to that list. Am I going to be able to finish all of these books by the end of the year or am I just going to drive myself crazy trying to finish them? I think it's going to be the latter. Hi guys and welcome to Fandom Newbie. My name is Shruti and today I'm going to be talking about 20 new and upcoming book releases that I desperately want to read. There are a lot of books to get through and they are super duper exciting so let's just jump into the video. The first book that I want to talk about is Agni Band Guardians of the Fire Chamber by S. Venkatesh. Now this is a book that I've actually already gotten around to reading so it's one book that I can cross off my TBR but basically this book is like the perfect combination of the Shiva trilogy and Dan Brown books. This story starts in 535 CE in ancient Egypt and it ends in modern day India. Essentially what the story is about is it's the fight between two factions. So you have the guardians who are protecting the Agniban, which is this mystical object that is supposed to bring order to the universe. And then you have the Dark Order who wants to steal the Agniban for their nefarious and evil purposes. Now this war between the two factions like started in 535 CE, like in ancient times, but it has also broken out in modern day times and the Agniban is again threatened with evil people trying to steal it. What I really liked about this book is how the author has combined ancient Egyptian mythology and Hindu mythology with modern day science and politics. And this juxtaposition of science and spirituality was very interesting to read. And actually through this juxtaposition, as well as through the characters in this book, the author has posed a very important question of like, what should we follow? Should we follow our faith or should we follow logic? This question and this juxtaposition of like science versus mythology is what added a kind of mystical aspect to this book and it kept it quite interesting. Along with that, the thrilling aspect of like the protagonist racing against time to save the Agniban really makes you like want to know what happens next in this book. So I highly recommend this book for beginners especially because it was very easy to read. Like the language is extremely easy and if you're looking for something that is kind of like Dan Brownish as well as like the Shiva trilogy, like you know, those kind of vibes, then this is the book for you, I feel, because honestly, the mythological elements, the thrilling elements really keep you engaged and hooked right till the very end. The next book that I want to talk about is Midnight at Malabar House by Vaseem Khan. Now, this book reminds me of Murder at Malabar Hill because it's kind of similar. Now, in Murder at Malabar Hill, we're introduced to Parveen Mistri, who is Bombay's first female solicitor. In this book, we are introduced to Persis Vadia, who is Bombay's first female cop. Now, this book is set in 1949, so it's post-independence, but the British are still around because the case that lands in Persis' lap is that of a British official who has been murdered near South Bombay, so like near Malabar Hill. But what I'm really interested in reading in this book is firstly the portrayal of Bombay like post-independence, so 1949 Bombay, I want to know how it was, what were the politics of that era, the how was like society in that time and also like what it was like to be a female cop and the first female cop in Bombay during that time. I feel like all of these things are very interesting aspects which will only add to the story because they did add to the story in Murder at Malabar Hill. So yeah, I'm really excited to read this book because I think that I'm hoping at least that it will have a lot of the same kind of nuance and social commentary that Murder at Malabar Hill also had. The next book is Aristotle and Dante Dive Into the Waters of the World by Benjamin Alide Science. Now, I have spoken about Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe so many times on this channel because it is one of my all-time favorite books ever. I absolutely adore that book and this is basically its sequel. So it follows Aristotle and Dante's relationship after the events of the first book. So basically it talks about their love and their relationship and how it's affected by different like societal norms of that time. If I'm not mistaken, Aristotle and Dante, the first book took place in the 90s, 80s or 90s, something like that. So of course it was a time where, I mean like homosexual relationships were really like looked down upon and mocked and weren't accepted. So this book I think follows 
how their relationship is affected because society is like that at that time and the blurb also mentions that Addy like Aristotle he suffers from like a very shocking loss so i'm pretty sure that those emotions also probably affect their relationship so it's just an exploration of their relationship and how different aspects of their life affected and like the first book i'm pretty sure that it's going to talk about various different emotions and feelings and issues so if aristotle has gone through a loss i'm pretty sure it's going to tackle the subject of grief and i'm really excited to read it because i know that benjamin alire science will handle every issue with so much nuance and sensitivity and care and i'm just really excited to read this book <laughs> the next book that i want to talk about is the chosen and the beautiful by ni wo now this book is basically a queer and asian retelling of the great gatsby with a magical and fantasy twist to it I need this book right now. And honestly, this book has already released, but the only reason why I haven't bought it is because it is so freaking expensive. I am just waiting for the price to come down just a little bit or like if there is some sale that's happening on Amazon because I need this book. I need this book. Like seriously, Queer and Asian retelling of the Great Gatsby set in the 1920s in America during the Jazz Age with magic like come on <laughs> book number 5 is You'll be the death of me by Karen McManus Now this is another high school murder mystery drama by Karen McManus she's the same one that wrote uh, One of Us is Lying that's the author What this is about is that I think it's three kids that want to ditch school so they are like basically trying to skip school and then they see another student who is also ditching school so they follow him for some reason and after they follow him it basically leads them to the site of his murder and so they're like all caught up in this murder mystery trial because not only are they at the scene of the crime but they have some kind of secret connection with the kid who has been murdered so there's basically like some kind of scandal about them and the kid who's been murdered so now they are like just trying to prove their innocence and also trying to solve the case of who murdered that teenager and how to save them that's what the book is about and again it sounds so much like one of us is lying with high school kids having all of these secrets and all this drama and also a murder mystery that's looming in the background so it sounds very exciting and i can't wait to read this one also book number 6 is cloud kaku land by anthony doer now i haven't read all the lights you cannot see all the lights we cannot see i don't know what the name of the book is i haven't read that one by anthony doer but i know that it's really really good but this one just sounds very very intriguing because it basically talks about like these characters who belong to three different timelines so there is one which is set in like ancient greece there is one timeline which is like modern day time and then there is one which is set in the future on like a spaceship so there's kind of like a historical fiction element there is like a contemporary story and there's also like a science fiction futuristic story all in one book and the interesting thing about this is that all these three stories are connected to this greek mythology story of aethon i don't know who that is exactly but basically it's all linked to like this greek mythology story and it just seems so bizarre and it just seems so so intriguing plus i've heard that he's an amazing writer because everyone loved his previous book which is all the lights we cannot see i seriously need to i need to look up the name of this book but basically everyone like really praises his writing and this plot just seems very weird and very very intriguing so yeah i really want to read this book also the next book that i want to talk about is under the whispering door by tj kloon now this is tj kloon's second novel the first one is the house in the cerulean sea which is a book that i am currently reading and i am loving it so much tj kloon's writing is so heartwarming and his stories are like i don't know they just make you feel really good like i'm really loving the house in the cerulean sea right now and this story also just sounds very very like heartwarming and intriguing basically it follows a love story between a ghost 
who is refusing to move on to the afterlife and the gatekeeper or like the ferryman who is supposed to help the ghost move on to the next life so it's their love story and again it's a queer love story and it just sounds like it will be very emotional and very cute and sweet and heartwarming i really want to read this book because his writing just puts a huge smile on my face <laughs> book number 8 is nothing but black and teeth by cassandra kaw now honestly i don't know much about this book but the only reason i want to read it is because of the cover i mean look at it it is freaking terrifying and it's probably going to give me nightmares like it already does give me nightmares but i still want to read it like it just looks so creepy and so scary and so terrifying but i'm strangely intrigued i don't know i really want to read it all i know about this book is that it's like a haunted house story but it has these japanese horror and mythological elements to it and that also makes it even more interesting because japanese horror is the scariest and the most disturbing and the creepiest like horror stories out there so i don't know why i want to do this to myself but i really want to read this book because it just sounds very very creepy <laughs> book number 9 is velvet was the night by silvia moreno garcia Now this story follows um three characters so there's one who is i think you pronounce her name as Matey or Mate I don't know but she's basically this woman who loves like romance spy novels then you have Loriana is it no Leonora wow <laughs> not Loriana <laughs> it's Leonora who uh is an artist and when leonora disappears under very like suspicious circumstances uh matey who is her neighbor tries to figure out where she's gone and while she's like trying to figure out where leonora has gone she bumps into elvis who is this like gangster or he's like a criminal who is also after leonora so now elvis and matey they team up to try to figure out and try to discover where leonora is but in doing this they realize that leonora had a lot of secrets that were associated with like government agencies and also russian spies so they're all caught in this like strange mafia world and this is all set in mexico in the 70s or 80s and it just sounds like a very gripping thriller novel that just like i don't know it just sounds super duper interesting and yeah i also want to read this one <laughs> the next one is the illuminated by anindita ghos now this is a contemporary or like a literary fiction novel about uh the relationship between a mother and daughter so the mother's name is shashi and the daughter is tara and it talks about the evolution of their relationship after shashi's husband and tara's father passes away and also like what happens to the relationship when tara starts dating a much older man and also how their relationship is affected by the rise of like religious fundamentalism in india so it basically talks about the relationship between this mother and daughter and what i've heard about this book is that it's it's very nuanced and it's very emotional and there was a lot of insight um into what's happening in society right now and other issues uh that the author brings to this book so it just sounded very it just sounded very very interesting and honestly i've been looking for more indian contemporary authors who write with a little bit more insight and nuance so i'm excited to read this one and i hope it lives up to everything i've read about it number 11 is saraswati's gift by kavita kani now there's another kavita kani book that i also want to read which is kan's wife also which i have heard very good things about but this one is basically a fictional retelling of the goddess saraswati's life What I've heard about Kavita Kane's writing is that she doesn't put these Hindu gods and goddesses on like a pedestal and she also talks about their shortcomings and the mistakes that they might have made in their life. It's very easy when mythology and religion are kind of mixed together to like put the, exactly what I put these put these like characters on a pedestal but she humanizes them and she also brings up like certain societal issues through her books so yeah i'm really interested to see her take on the goddess saraswati and also 
how she handles the character and her entire story. Number 12 is She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. The blurb of this book says that it's basically like a Mulan meets the Song of Achilles and honestly that just sounds so perfect and so intriguing like I need to read this book. Uh, basically the story follows a brother-sister duo. So the brother when he's born he's like destined for greatness but as the sister like the girl she's destined to be nothing. But then like bandits attack the village where this brother-sister live and the brother dies and so the girl basically to survive she has to dress up like a boy so she impersonates like being a young boy and she enters a monastery to become a novice and then I think the story basically follows her struggle for survival and to hide her identity as a girl in this monastery. Just the combination of Mulan and the Song of Achilles is so interesting so yeah I'm really interested to read this book as well. Next one is For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing. Now this book is kind of like a thriller or a mystery novel I think and it's set in like this really preppy, expensive uh, private school who has a teacher who is jealous of the students who are in the school because he never had a very privileged life. And what he does about his jealousy is that he punishes the students and sets them right in what I think is like a very sadistic way. So basically when he's like punishing the students or whatever, some things go wrong and like chaos or like catastrophe ensues and it's the story of all of these like entitled brats and this really sadistic teacher and what happens to them. I think that's what the story is about but it just sounds so twisted and so dark and what I'm really intrigued about is how I feel like this will be a story where every single character will be bad. So like every single character will be like will have this grey morality and everyone will be a villain so you don't really know who to root for and those are the type of stories that I find very interesting and just like I love the exploration of like extremely unlikable grey morality characters because I don't know it just makes for a very intriguing story. The next book is Blue Skinned Gods by S.J. Sindhu. Now this is the fictional retelling of Kalki who is the 10th avatar of Lord Vishnu and exactly like what I said about Saraswati's gift, this book also uh, humanizes Kalki and talks about uh, his life. Now the interesting thing about this book and I'm like interested to see how the author kind of talks about all these issues because what is said about this book is that it talks about like different ethnicities and different like ethnic backgrounds. It also talks about gender and sexuality and it also talks about um, different like societal issues as well as it gives a very heartwarming take on the entire concept of family and familial bonds. And the reason why I said this is very interesting because to talk about things like ethnicity and sexuality and gender and also to talk about like family, I feel like can be very tricky in an in a Indian or a Hindu mythology setting because of like the strong connection between Hindu mythology and Hindu religion. So I'm really interested to see how the author will tackle this issue. Quite intrigued about this book also. The next book that I want to talk about is Taxiwala and Other Stories by Numair Atif Chaudhary. Now the reason why I heard about this book is because Vivek from Vivekisms on Instagram put up a review about this book and it just sounded so interesting. Basically this book is, is like it's a collection of short stories um, from the point of view of outsiders looking in. So basically it's people who are less privileged so whether it's a taxiwala or a young boy who lives on the streets or a domestic helper like it's their perspective of I think the privileged people who are a part of their life. That's what these short stories are about. And what uh, Vivek has said in his review is how these stories are extremely hard hitting and quite uncomfortable to get through. And that is what really drew me in because I feel like any story that is very real and very raw and very authentic in depicting things like social divide and class divide is 
a very intriguing thing so yeah thanks to vivek and his uh review of this book i'm definitely going to check it out the next book is the stranger in the lifeboat by mitch album now i like this year itself i read um the five people you meet in heaven by mitch album and i absolutely loved that book it was very heartwarming and just like it it imparted philosophical teachings in a very non preachy and a really nice way so that's what i expect from this book as well this book is basically about these men who get caught in a shipwreck and uh, during the shipwreck they save this man from the sea who comes inside their boat their lifeboat and says that he is god and basically he can save them but the others like all of them have to believe in him and only then will he be able to save them so i guess this book will tackle the entire issue of faith and um i guess belief in god and i'm really excited to see how he tackles this this like spiritual concept excited for this book also book 17 is will by will smith I think every 90s kid is a Will Smith fan because of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and also because of his song Miami. <laughs> so, I really love Will Smith. I think he is a really cool actor and he's an amazing entertainer and honestly I don't know that much about his like personal life. So, I'm quite excited to read about his story and what he has to say about his life. The next book is The Girls Are Never Gone by Sarah Glenn Marsh. Now this one is super interesting also. This follows a girl who doesn't believe in ghosts. But at the same time, she runs this paranormal investigation podcast where she only talks about ghosts and she only talks about like paranormal activity happening in different places. Her investigation, like her ghost investigation leads her to this haunted house. and the things that happen in the haunted house makes her question her skepticism and she actually starts questioning herself saying maybe ghosts are real this also just sounds really really fun and i love a good haunted house story i feel if it's done well so i hope this one is done well and i can't wait to read it at number 19 we have beasts and beauty by soman chainani now this book is a fairy tale retelling kind of book and i love books in this genre like i've read a couple of them and i love it when authors give a modern spin to old and outdated fairy tales and the interesting thing about this book is that i've heard that the fairy tales like the main characters in these fairy tales uh some of them are indian some of them are chinese and there's also lgbtq plus representation so yeah i'm really excited to see this author's take on different fairy tales especially if there is like a broader representation in this book and the last book is the escapement by lavi thidar i hope that's how you pronounce his name but this book is basically like a combination of an american western so think like cowboys and guns uh so a combination of a western with a circus extravaganza and mythology and fantasy so this just seems like a combination of many genres and i also know that there's like parallel universes in this one so it just sounds very whimsical and bizarre and honestly it gives me like erin morgenstern vibes with the night circus and the starless sea because it seems like it'll have the same whimsical atmospheric strange bizarre stuff going on where you might not know what exactly is happening but you're in love with it anyway <laughs> like that's those are the vibes that i get from this book and it just seems so so interesting like i really love good atmospheric books that are just extremely whimsical and crazy but like if it's well written and it really sucks you into the world of this book then that's what i really love so yeah i'm really hoping that this book is like that it sounds like that and yeah i hope it is because i really want to read another book that is as whimsical as the starless sea and the night circus So yeah, that was my video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below letting me know which are your most anticipated books that you want to read uh in 2021. We have just a few more months left, so let me know what you plan to read. And of course, do subscribe to my channel for more book related videos. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.